said I'm a crush it. Call me. Hi. I'm Anthony Walker, world traveler and your host of Unsung, Pittsburgh's premier online news magazine show. Today, once again, we're putting some new studio tech to use because, well, even though it's April, it's still cold outside. And, as it is still winter here in the Berg, we remind you to help those helping others keep warm, just like last episode's feature, Shepherd's Heart. In this episode, Unsung talks with an organization that is keeping warm in another way, helping kids with cancer. We also hear from our area youth on how you can take action on our region's air quality. But first, as always, here's what's happening with our area nonprofits. ALS Connections announced that it has expanded its website activities to include crowdfunding for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis projects utilizing Indiegogo, a leading global fundraising platform. ALS, often referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease in the United States, affects 30,000 people in the U.S. Patients usually pass away within two to five years of the disease diagnosis. There is no cause, no treatment, and no cure. The idea for crowdfunding came out of a competition that ALS Connections hosted in 2012. ALS Connections approached Indiegogo to partner with to make the competition ideas a reality. The first two projects include Gator Rons, which wants to become the Paul Newman of ALS and is donating profits from its hot sauce to ALS research, as well as Hope Loves Company, which is holding the first ever camp for kids of ALS patients. To find out more about these two projects, support them with a contribution, or start your own ALS crowdfunding project, please visit indiegogo.com slash partners slash ALSC. Achieva has issued a call to action. As Congress and the White House try to negotiate new budget and deficit reduction deals, on the negotiating table is a harmful benefit cut to Social Security and supplemental security income, called the Chained CPI. The proposed Chained CPI would reduce the cost of living adjustment that Social Security and SSI beneficiaries receive in most years, resulting and people getting smaller benefit increases than they otherwise would under the current calculation. Cuts from the chain CPI could compound and get bigger every year. For example, for the average Social Security Disability Insurance beneficiary, the chain CPI would mean a benefit cut of about $347 per year after 10 years, $720 per year after 20 years, and $1,084 per year after 30 years. After 30 years, the cut is roughly one month's worth of benefits for the average SSDI beneficiary. The chain CPI is especially harmful to SSI beneficiaries because it not only lowers the annual COLA, but also reduces people's initial SSI benefit. The reduction in the initial benefit can also mean a reduction in the number of eligible people. Over time, the chain CPI could also lower the income eligibility standards for over 30 programs, including Medicaid, Head Start, and food stamps, so that fewer people qualify for these vital programs each year. To see how much the chain CPI would cut your Social Security or SSI benefits, please visit the link on your screen. Melissa Carey has a very special interview with Jenry and how this kid is helping other kids with cancer. And to top it all off, He's a gamer, just like me. Well, Jenry's Kids with Cancer Fund is a 501c3 charity started by people that love Jenry when he was diagnosed with leukemia in 2009. And we provide handheld gaming systems, go bags, and um, financial assistance to the families at Children's Hospital whose children are being treated for cancer. Well, they give you chemotherapy to kill the cancer. But also, since the cancer kills your blood and so does the chemotherapy, you need blood transfusions and stuff. And blood transfusions, a red blood transfusion would take like three hours, I think, to have it done. And then platelets would take two hours, so it would be like a five hour wait that you'd have to wait for. What got me through my treatments was my handheld video game. And I saw a bunch of other kids that didn't have one and I wanted them to have one, so I asked my parents if they could give video games to kids at the hospital. And we did say no, but it wasn't because we didn't want to help. It was because obviously we couldn't afford that. People started 
giving money to us just for because they heard my idea and we just started buying one video game at like every three months or whatever and then it grew until we have how it is now. Every kid who gets diagnosed gets a video game and if they already have a video game then they get two games to go with. It's not just video games. The older kids can pick from MP3 players, the little the littler ones can have a um, leap pad. There's a closet full of electronics for the um, child life specialist to hand out. And how that works is when a child comes in, um, the social worker knows who's there and who's not newly diagnosed. So they get our bag from the social worker and then the child life specialist, they go and visit the newly diagnosed child and that's when they give them one of our games. Uh, he was diagnosed at one in the morning so we didn't have anything with us. Not, a, not even a notebook. I couldn't even write down acute lymphoblastic leukemia. I didn't even know what it was that he had. So um, the next morning, a girlfriend of mine brought a bag that had everything we needed in it. And what I didn't know was that we would travel back and forth to the hospital hundreds of times because of fevers. You don't know that when you're newly diagnosed. And so we would just take that bag and go. And that's how they became go bags. Go bags. People have been so amazingly generous that we've been able to move into providing for the neediest families <clears throat> on the oncology floor. You don't think about the widowed moms, the single moms, um, dads who work construction and they don't get paid if they're not on their job site. <clears throat> and some of these children are in the hospital a week to, our, one of our friends was there for almost a year trying to battle his cancer. So um, a lot of those parents don't get paid. They, they're on Family Medical Leave Act and they're not getting a paycheck. So utilities are shut off, there's no money to travel back and forth for, for visiting their child if they do have to go home for other kids. We have a golf outing in June on the 10th at Edgewood Country Club and that information is on our website. Then we have our race in September on September 14th. It's called Gen Ray's Run for Cancer Kids. It's a 5K and a one mile walk. And then afterwards we have live music and carnival type games, a concession stand, of course auction baskets and silent auctions, but a lot of fun. It's a lot bigger than you would think. People can get involved by helping us financially, sending a donation. Our online donations are available on our website, www.genreeskids.com. The go bag supplies are, are a big help. If you could collect those with your organization or your office, that's always a help because we give um, 10 to 15 of them a month. We would like to help by being a volunteer. There's a tab on our website how you can get involved and we always need volunteers for our events. We need golfers for our golf out and we need runners for our race. So all of that helps. You can come to an event and bid on an auction item or just come and enjoy the music and buy a hot dog and all of that money is used for the kids. We want our volunteers to um, have this touch their heart to, we want them to come and see and experience why we do this. We want them to come and understand and, and understand these children and their families and the needs that there are because most people don't understand what a cancer treatment is like for a family. You can find out what we do at generouskids.com. Students speak up and take action on air quality with the new voices of youth. Let's take a look. I believe that one person can make a difference. We are the determining factor of what's to come. It's make or break time and if we don't step up to clean our air, our city will become obsolete. The reason youth should get involved with air pollution and Pittsburgh and all around is because they're the future of the nation. Today's youth are tomorrow's future. What can students do to help improve the air quality in Pittsburgh? They should start small at home, at school, and around their communities, and they should set a precedent for others to follow. I think a leader is really important, but even the first follower is more important. After more followers start following the leader, then that's when the change really happens. Talk to teachers that can help them organize different programs such as recycling. They can walk, take a bike, take the bus or even carpool. Composting, gardening. I feel the most important thing for teens to do to improve their region's air quality is to really educate their community. Talk to others and inform them on the issues. The problem with air pollution is that a lot of people don't know it's happening so therefore they don't know how to make an impact. They should create an alliance 
and work towards cleaner air. To me, clean air means less health problems, better quality of life, and a more beautiful city. It affects our health. My mom, my dad, and a lot of my friends have asthma. One of my best friends had childhood leukemia, which is directly linked to the air pollution in our homes. As a teen with asthma, I personally can vouch that it makes sports or any athletic activities much more strenuous and exhausting. Clean air means the world to me. I'm Alexis. I'm from Shaler High School. I'm Elizabeth, and I go to Thomas Jefferson High School. My name is Jenny, and I'm from South Allegheny High School. I'm Yasha, and I'm from City Charter High School. I'm Steph from South Allegheny High School. My name is Melanie, and I go to City Charter High School. One person is capable of making a difference. One student can make a difference. One person can make a difference, and these students will. The ESO performs at Carnegie Music Hall in a magnificent concert celebrating 25 years of the Edgewood Symphony, featuring Festive Overture, Piano Concerto, Lament, and Symphony No. 4. Gala reception immediately following in the grand foyer with complimentary hors d'oeuvres, silent auction, live music, and cash bar. Tickets now available at edgewoodsymphony.org. Pump, the Urban League Young Professionals of Greater Pittsburgh, the New Pittsburgh Collaborative, Leadership Pittsburgh, and the Greater Pittsburgh Nonprofit Partnership are co-hosting a mayoral candidate forum on the evening of May 1st at the August Wilson Center in downtown Pittsburgh. Confirmed candidates include Councilman Peduto, former City Council President and Auditor General Jack Wagner, and Representative Jake Wheatley. All other candidates have been invited. The forum will be followed by a networking reception and opportunities to learn more about the event host and participating candidates. The registration is free, but required for admittance. To register, please visit pump.org. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag UnsungPGH. As always, thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on PittsburghOnVideo.org. And hey, we're now on iTunes, so go over, download the video or audio versions for when you gotta run. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might just find yourself here on Unsung. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. As always, I'm your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. Said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car. Any